Welcome to the Pope on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is... I am the Pope in question. My name is Reverend Steve. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is an actual thing worth a Google. Uh, when I'm not doing this podcast, I am a trans woman by the name of May Lynn. Yes, yes, a little about the urban achievers, and proud we are of all of that. This is episode... 430, The Triumphant Return, and our last episode, episode 429, was published near the end of December of last year, 2021. We discussed President Biden <coughs> and the Ice Cream Bunny and the movie Nightmare Alley, which you didn't like, Bunny? What? No! Well, let me just fill you in on that snag that it sounded like you didn't hear about. That Zoom has like changed its policy, so they cut meetings off after 40 minutes. So every 40 minutes, we're going to have to restart Zoom until we find an alternative of some sort. But anyway, uh, I, I found it boring. I found it predictable. I found it pretty much gave away its ending really early. Yeah, I felt that if I hadn't watched Tom Browning's Freaks, that it would be more surprising to me. Yeah. But I felt that it owed a lot for that. Uh, I thought it was, I thought it was, you know, it, there, there's, there aren't a lot of freak show noir films out there. I dug it. I thought it was good. Anyway, okay. So shortly after that episode dropped, I went MIA for a while, for a couple of months. Now, I don't want to get into it, and I don't want to talk about why I went MIA, but when I finally did come back down to Earth, I was really worried about how do I explain to people what happened to me, what do I say, how do I explain it. But here's a plus. Being trans, funny. Yeah. You might not know. Trans people are at such a high rate of suicide, and it's so hard to be trans physically, mentally, emotionally, and psychologically. Plus, there's the pressure of being trans during an election year when Republicans don't have a caravan of illegals. Yes. So, they're focusing on transphobia as being the leading cause of all of our nation's problems. So, just being trans is so widely dangerous. So all of these reasons, the mental struggle, the danger, the risk of suicide, the difficult toll physically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically, all of this comes together, it basically gives me a massive amount of leeway in the mental breakdown department. Yes. Which is a real comfort, you know? It's, it, it's, a, it's comforting to know that tomorrow I could shave my head, get naked, cover myself in the uh, and go into a Dollar General and sing, I am the very model of a modern major general, and people would go, oh, she's trans, it's okay. Hey, why don't you come over here and get some tea? How are you feeling? Are you okay? Here's a blanket. <laughs> so, so that's good. So nothing's happened between now and December 22nd, right? Mm, yeah, yeah. No, we're... We're, we're, we're just closer to apocalypse. Uh, we we may have picked up the pace some, you know. Uh, it's a fucking hellhole. It's a hellhole, and it's just getting worse. It's just getting worse, and there is nobody, nobody, who who has any kind of power, who gives any kind of fuck. And I, I'm done with all of them. Yeah, it's uh, a bit upsetting. I still haven't gotten over the fact that Betty White died. Uh, myself, uh, Milo died. I thought that for the symmetry of the thing, because I'm a real big Rocky Horror Picture Show fan, I thought that Tim Curry should have eaten Milo's corpse. Yes. And do we know that he didn't? 
point. Yeah. Point. We do not know that. Uh, suddenly it's popular for young people to be reading Bram Stoker's Dracula. Really? I missed that part. Right now, there's this thing, and it's called uh, Dracula a Day or Daily Dracula, and basically, uh, like, you sign up for this thing, and it sends you a little bit of the book a day, and a bunch of young people are reading it and making TikToks about it. Mal is reading it right now. It's really surprising. Uh, it's, it's, it's good to, uh, to see young people caring about vampires again, Mal said to me. So is Grant Stoker's Dracula supposed to be this gay? And I'm like, honey, you have to sit down and let me show you an <laughs> interview with a vampire. <laughs> you will be so pleased. Yeah. At the level of gaiety in this film. So, uh, uh this is the monologue, sort of pre form sort of like a combination of the monologue we did pre-MIA and uh, Bunny versus. There was something you wanted to do, Bunny. Well, okay, but before, yes, I do. Yes, I do. But the one last thing that happened while we were off that needs to be addressed because I know why it happened. And anybody saying anything different is full of shit. Will Smith smacked Chris Rock in the Oscars. There is only one reason possible for that to have occurred. The National Academy of Arts and Science did that to get me to watch the Oscars next year. Hoping for another slap. But it ain't going to happen because I'm on to your little fucking tricks. The crazy thing is that their Oscar ratings are down every year. The Oscar ratings get lower and lower and lower. So I imagine that when Will Smith stood up and slapped Chris Rock that uh, the people behind the Oscars started acting like uh, Bill Hicks. Uh, there is a God. He loves us all so much. So yeah. They were probably pretty <coughs> with themselves. Do you want There's me to change the camera? Do you always want right to about George Carlin and suddenly not... everyone gives a shit about him? That sort of upsets me a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, suddenly it's cool to like George Carlin. Okay. Yeah. Well, he he, he did he did break with the whole with the whole Roe v. Wade thing. And we were, we had the, like the best sound clip that we had fucking available. We had to go back twenty years to get off of George Carlin again. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to live in a world that Bill Hicks and George Carlin George Carlin would be proud to live in. I don't think that's not much to ask. Yeah. Yeah. I am. I am not sure if if that world exists. Unfortunately. But yes, so, yeah, so, so, there's that, there's the Oscars, there's, there's, uh, the whole, the whole, you know, making women second class citizens again thing, you know, uh, and again, like, like there's, like right now there is not a single politician that you could, that you could name that I can't say fuck that person about, I'm tired of all of them. Bernie, you're supposed to be pushing him to the left. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah. And by the time we get to the end of this week's Steve's historic approximation, I will be giving everybody a brand new reason to say, fuck you, Supreme Court. So that's exciting. Okay. All new reason to hate the Supreme Court. Oh, okay. I, I, I am curious. I, with the little pieces that I have, I do not see how they fit together to that. But yes, so so you want to just knock this out of the park with what I was planning on doing, so we can uh, go on. So yes, in in my 
desperation, frankly, because I don't see anything else to do, I'm going to give Nancy Pelosi a call and give her a little bit of my mind. She's got the phone. See, I wrote it all out. So I can't, I can't be seeing myself while I'm doing this. And the glasses have got to go on. And how do we dial out on these damn newfangled things? Where's the curly cord? I miss the cords. I do. I miss pay phones. Yes. Yeah, pay phones, especially the big stand-up booth ones. Those were always fun as shit when I was a kid. And yes, playing Superman. Mm -hmm. well, country is such a Yes. We got rid of the pay booths. And truth, justice, and the American way left. All right, so we're dialing Nancy. Now, you know we're not going to get her. We're only getting the voicemail. Thank you for calling the office of the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi. We value hearing from you. To listen to this menu in English, please stay on the line. Para la prensa española cinco. If you would like to voice your opinion, share feedback, or pass along your personal story to Speaker Pelosi, please press 1. Thank you for calling the office of Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the House. As a constituent of California's 12th District, your views are very important to us. Please leave your comments at the tone. Was that a tone? Okay. Speaker Pelosi. I am calling to inform you that I will not be voting Democratic until I see the, a party that actually fights for its principles instead of paying lip service to them. I will encourage others who look to you with the last vestiges of hope do the same. You have done nothing but crush that hope time and again. Let this stand as a vote of no confidence in the Democratic Party. You use our pain for fundraising and give us excuses instead of action. You ignore the reasons why you were given the power and vote with You ignore the reasons why you were given power and vote with the fascists destroying this country. Mitch McConnell pushes for a national abortion ban and you will fundraise as the only ones who can stop him, but history has shown that even if you win the majority again, Mitch will be the real winner. He will bring his bill to the floor, and you'll vote for it, just as you voted for every tax cut for the rich. You might want to say I'm wrong, but that begs the question why the DNC is endorsing anti-abortion candidate Henry Cuellar over pro-choice... Okay, so I think I, I think I got cut off with Nancy Pelosi. Hi, Nancy. So this is like this is like a little preview of what's going to go on with Zoom. Okay, so the Zoom meeting's going to run out. We'll just restart the Zoom meeting, just like I'm just going to call back Nancy. While you call Nancy and go through that, I'll just be singing. I'll just sing songs to people to uh, cheer them up. Uh, I would now like to sing the song the, the Beatles have been recorded. We value hearing I not sing all of Hey Jude. So listen to this menu in English. Uh, Please stay on the line. Cara, the big man has been known as Hinkle. If you would like to voice your opinion, share feedback, or pass along your personal story to Speaker Pelosi, please press 1. If you would like to... All right, quit singing. We're going back. From a Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the House, as a constituent of California's 12th District, your views are very important to us. Please leave your comments at the tone. <laughs> Speaker Pelosi, to continue. You might want to say I'm wrong, but that begs the question as to why the DNC is endorsing anti-abortion candidate Henry Cuellar over pro-choice Jessica Cisneros. You're so funny. Simply, you're lying to us. I've seen Russian citizens speak out against the war in Ukraine. 
two police officers show up and each gently take an elbow and then guide the citizen over to a nearby police van. In stark contrast to Americans protesting police brutality, we get flashbanged, tear gassed, shot with rubber bullets, pulled off the streets, and thrown into unmarked vans, driven off to God knows where. And what did the Democratic Party do? You dressed in African garb, knelt, and then didn't do another goddamn thing. Biden wants more funding for the police? Why? So they can afford more body armor, tanks, and offensive weapons to use against the American people? Shame on you. You can attack your citizens with military force, but you can't do anything about the January 6th insurrectionists who... They, they, they don't listen to the voice messages. They really don't li read their emails. <laughs> so, all right, calling Nancy back. And also, Nancy Pelosi, Arby's should go back to five for five. Now it's two for six, and that's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> that's Speaker Pelosi, to continue, shame on you. You can attack your citizens with military force, but you can't do anything about the January 6th insurrectionists who are in our government right now. Law laws are not for the elite, as your insider trading attests to. Laws are only for us little people. As for mansion and cinema are concerned, I could do without the scapegoating. All it shows is that the Democrats, the Democrats cannot even beat the Democrats, let alone the Republicans. Trump and his gang of traitors still roam free. You failed getting us a pitiful $15 minimum wage. You failed several times on Build Back Better. You failed women and their reproductive rights. You failed brown kids in cages who were still there. You failed on voting rights. You failed on student debt. Failure after failure after failure. You also failed on trans people, Nancy Pelosi. And you failed on trans people. But good luck looking for UFOs, I guess. Ta da! <laughs> and 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 of course we all know that this doesn't do a goddamn thing anyway just like voting does it's it's so funny like the DNC just yesterday I saw popped up on face bill record month record month fundraising ever you're not going to do anything you you're, you're going to tell us you're going to do shit you're going to tell us you're going to fight for women's reproductive rights, but you're not. You have the fucking majority right now. Right now. What are you, what are you going to do when you have less power? And it really comes down to is that the fucking filibuster is more important than women. I mean, Christ, Biden can sign an executive order. 
I don't see that happening either. I mean, this is a huge fucking ass deal. This is no little ass shit. You know? Half of the people are going to be less. By law. By, By fucking law. You know? Not just the shitty way we treat each other. (laughs) <laughs> you know. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Before before uh, we get kicked off of Zoom and before we move on to another segment, uh, I stopped going to movies for a few months there. Yeah. But now, now I'm back. So what I wanted to do is a little lightning round of some of the movies that I have seen this year up to this point. Okay. Just a a quick lightning round of some of the films that have come out over the last uh, few months. Uh, The Batman, too long. Good film, not a good Batman movie. I I just had no interest. I'm Batmaned out. Not unless you bring back Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's just ridiculous that people go, oh, another Spider-Man? That's too many Okay. It's a fun movie. It's not an original idea. Hey, let's do the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but with 70s porn. And that's basically the entire film. Not that that's a bad thing. It was pretty fun. Yeah. Uh, Morbius, it should have came out in 2003. If it came out in 2003, I think people would go, oh, this is pretty good. It's coming out now. It's the wrong time for it to come out, and it, it's pretty it's, it's, uh, Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't really, I don't like what Sony is, like, Sony's just doing weird shit with the Spider-Verse, like, how the fuck does Madame Web warrant her own movie? I, I think, I think a large portion of the problem with Morbius that I haven't heard anybody talk about is the fact that it was supposed to come out before No Way Home. Yeah, this is true. I haven't I haven't seen it. I, I I'll I'll accidentally see it sooner or later at some point in my life. And you know, I am I'm, I'm leaving it up I'm leaving it up to the universe to to tell me when is it when is the right time. The right time when the stars are properly aligned for me to see the Morbius movie. So I'm thinking next Friday. Uh, <laughs> Doctor Strange 2 gets strangier. Uh, yeah. Great film. Loved it. I loved it just because I'm a Marvel mark and that's all there is to it. Other than that, I, I'm liking it less and less as I think about it. Pretty gory for a PG-13 film. I, I feel that for some young people... Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness could be their generation, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. 
Oh, we're running out of time. This meeting is ending in 10 minutes. Yes, and a lot of it was was fan service. And I also feel that uh, not enough credit is given to the real hero here She had two mothers in the comic books too, right? Because I'm not really familiar with her. Yeah, because I really get like like I I was like like that does not seem like a Sam Raimi move. Okay, I mean like I like Sam Raimi, and I'm sure he's a decent, wonderful person, and I'm sure that anything he may have been in his youth. He has he has learned and he has outgrown, but but both Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell, if I had a vote, I I, I would say that in their younger days they called inanimate objects gay. Yeah. You know, I mean, I could just totally see those two hanging out, talking about how the new Volkswagen is gay or or something like that. No dark man. It's it's kind of cool. Everybody out on Twitch can see that the Zoom meeting is running out. Yeah, they're sending they're sending that directly into the feed. So. <laughs> To find the car, yeah. Floating in the air in a swirling vortex of doom. And it's like, okay, I had to watch it twice, but like, there's the freaking car. Okay, the car that Sam Ridley puts in everything. It is in there. The Northman, a beautiful Viking art film that I'll never see again. It's the, it's the Green Knight all over again. What a beautiful film, a work of art. Incredible, a masterful film. Now that I've seen it once, I don't have to see it again. I have The Green Knight, and I, like, have forgotten to watch it. It's a beautiful film, and I loved it. I don't have to see it again. Yeah. It's a, it's a work of art, and you can see it once, and then you can say, there you go, I've seen it. Yeah. It's a great film, but I'll probably never see it again. Firestarter, the Morbius of Stephen King movies. If I was Stephen King, I'd be ashamed that they made this he made Maximum Overdrive. He has no shame. Maximum Overdrive at least was, like, dumb in a fun way. His fire started just dumb in a dumb way. Yeah. Uh, Uncharted? You're talking about the dude... You're talking about the dude who took a paycheck for Lawnmower Man, and that fucking short story was only one page long. Lawnmower Man, that's right. Uh, so let's not go talking about Stephen King and shame. <laughs> Uncharted, not a great movie, not a good movie, but fairly entertaining and better than the last Indiana Jones movie. <clears throat> okay, see now I'm confused. I'm confused between that one and the other one that you saw. Which is the Sandra Bullock one? 
Or are they both Sandra Bullock ones? Lost City is the Sandra Bullock one. Uncharted is the one that's based on a video game. With Tom Holland. Right, okay. It's not, a, it's not a good movie, it's not a great movie, but it's better than The Crystal Skull. Yes. So, and of course, everything, everywhere, all at once, the best movie of the year. If anyone says any differently, I will fight you. It was a very good movie. We watched it last night. Don't know what it was about. I'm going to have to watch it a, a few more times. And I goddamn plan to. But I want to point out something about that fucking movie. That movie, they owe me money. They owe me... I invented cock foo. You have googly eyes. You have... <laughs> But I invented cock foo. They owe me money. Huh? That's right. I saw it in theaters two and a half times. Because the last time I saw it, the movie was interrupted by a tornado. Oh! Hey, Oklahoma! Yeah! When the wind comes, rushing down the plane. About the multiverse? Well, you, you're talking to Colorado where it's been snowing since Friday. That's crazy. It's May. Yeah? Yeah, when I woke up, it was 49 degrees. I, I was blown away by that. Mm-hmm. Thick leggings to church. 49? Oh, no. Oh, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just scraped 20 inches of snow off my car yesterday morning. Ugh. Uh, so, yeah, so that's our intro. That's our monologue. And we should wrap it up because we have two minutes and 45 seconds until Zoom kicks us off. Yes. Before we, off before we get to the historic approximation. Uh, is that what we're going to next? Yes. Okay. I'm hitting the technical. I should have prepared something. But and we're back. <laughs> With more of the Pope on film. Yes. It's been a while since I've yet held a bunny in this house. Isn't it amazing? Yes. It's been a while. If you're like me, you're no doubt a big fan of this podcast, The Pope on Film. I mean, who is it nowadays in this day and age? It's sweeping the nation, it's swiffering the nation. But only real fans, true hardcore fans, lifers, ride or die, who have been with us since day one, back when this podcast started, way back in 1994, when the Pope on Film was actually a dial-up BBS. Yes. Remember those days, buddy? Yeah, we were running Wildcat. Yeah. Crazy. You could download a picture of Bunny and I. The download took uh, about 29 hours. It was worth it. It was worth it. Yeah. Uh, what, I, what I really loved, what I really loved, it always made my day, seeing it come up in ASCII art like King Diamond's Lair. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. You, you, you knew you were going to find some good wares there. Yeah. So true fans of this podcast would know two things about us, two fundamental facts about the book. America's hottest podcasting couple, Bunny and Maylin. First and foremost, Bunny, is the fact that when you're not recording the podcast, you are actually a counselor. You counsel trouble at risk teens. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about that, Bunny? Uh, yes, I, I counsel them. Um, most specifically, what we do is we run a, run a series of, of, uh, psychological profiles, you know, kind of questionnaires where there's really no right answer, you know, and it's, you need the number two pencil because we scan them all down. We're dealing with a lot of troubled kids out there. Uh, and that problem is not being addressed, but 
any of them who show a um, a propensity uh, to be a clown, they are sent over to me, and I try to help them enroll in clown college and help design a good face for them and, and work on the paperwork on getting the face registered so that they can begin their new career as a professional clown. And you really got to enroll them in clown college because if they don't enroll in clown college, a lot of them just become clown strippers. Yeah, yeah. But the, the, the back alley clowns, which we really don't want to see happen. These people have had enough problems in their lives as it is, you know. Yeah. And, but, yeah. And that's the thing that, that Republicans don't realize is that by getting rid of Brothel versus Wade, you're just going to make legal clown abortions. Uh, you're just going to make clown abortions more difficult. Dangerous. People are going to be going to back alley clown abortionists, and it, it's just, it's very difficult. Yes. And the second fact, the second fact that you would know about me is that I'm a big fan of history. I love it, but I'm also a storyteller. So, in this segment, what we like to do is take a story from the history books, maybe one that people don't know too well, and reword it via my own unique storytelling style, and that's what this is another educationally uneducational installment of. Dan I like to call it repeatedly and knowingly, whether anyone wants me to or not. Personally I like the name Shap. It sounds like a TikTok challenge. Shap challenge. Anywho, this week on the old Shapity Shap Shap, we will be discussing a wild bit of sports history. That's not only batshit insane, but most, a lot of it actually happened right here in my small town. In my small, tiny, racist, bigoted town of Shawnee, Oklahoma. No idea that one of the craziest and most maddening chats we've ever done on this podcast actually happened right here in my own backyard. But before getting to the shack proper, I need to get a little bit personal. Okay. Uh, all right. So I went MIA for a few months in the beginning of 2022. I don't want to talk about it. I will not talk about it. But the point is, once I came back to Earth, I've been trying to focus on bettering myself. I've been trying to be a better person, and so far it's working. I'm trying to unplug from Twitter and the internet, spend time outside, meditating, being quiet, listening to music. I've been try I'm on new antidepressants, and that's been helping. I'm going to the movies again, which uh, really helps with my self-care. And I was nervous about bringing this up on the podcast, but uh, I've been going back to church. I miss it. I just missed it. I, it, it, it as, as much as I gave up Catholicism, I just missed having a place to go to where I was quiet and there was singing and it was always, you know, one hour of my week, which was just a time that I just got to shut the fuck up, you know? And I just missed it. And so I decided to go back to church, and it's been nice. I've been going to the only Catholic church in town, St. Benedict's Catholic Church, which was built in 1907, the same year that Oklahoma was made a state. The church I go to is the same age as this state. That's what I always find fascinating. You know? Like, I used to be blown away by the movie theater downtown that was open in, in 1947. This church was open in 1907, and, and the whole thing just blows me away. I was going to go as a guy. I was going to, I, because I went to a Catholic church. I, I, I was a... I went to a Catholic school from first grade to eighth grade, and then after that, I spent four years in a Catholic high school 
became youth group. And after that, I became a counselor in that same Catholic youth group. And then eventually, like so many people, I discovered um, drinking and drugs and women and men. And I just stopped going to church. But I miss it. And at first, I was like, if I'm, I'm going to go back to Catholic church every Sunday. I'm going to dress up as a guy and go to church. And my wife was... My wife is very supportive, but my wife was the one who said, I don't see why you can't go as a woman. And it's like, I I don't want to be mugged. I don't want to be killed. I don't want to be shamed. It feels dangerous. It feels like I shouldn't do this. And so I woke up early the morning of, and it's like, I'm going to go to church. Fuck, Natasha's right. I got to go as a woman. I'm going as a woman every week the church and there's a part of me that's like ah oh, this is I, this might be a sin if people knew like thank goodness that I have gotten pretty good at and it, it's so that I can go to church and it, I'm not automatically you know drawn and quartered but the way that I see it is uh, going back to church just it, it feels like something that I would think it's it's something that's important to me and uh, yeah I get it Catholics have a hard time with trans people I get that but you, you know what I have a hard time with decades of covering up sexual abuse so maybe don't throw stones about the trans woman in your church Catholic <laughs> back to church. It's, it's been nice. I'm going back to church on my own terms. I've been going to church every week since April 10th, which apparently was on the Sunday. I go to church and I'm like, hey, fuck it. Uh, uh, three palms. Fucking score. Okay. I might tweet each and every mass and it's nice. And then sometimes I'll come home and everyone's still asleep. And that's really nice. So I get to, you know, just get some coffee, go out on the veranda. And listening. Yeah, nice. The bacon. Don't bring home the what? No, but uh, every once in a while they'll have a coffee and donuts at the fellowship hall, and it's like fucking yes. Sometimes I'll bring donuts home, but uh, one morning I I went to Wendy's and I got a breakfast baconator. But then after that I went to McDonald's and got hash browns and coffee, and then I brought it home and I'm and I, I eat it I'm like oh I mean a Wendy's baconator and I'm having a McDonald's hash brown and a McDonald's coffee, and some people lost their shit about that. And it's like, I'm sorry, but uh, does anyone, can anyone tell me what Wendy's coffee tastes like? No, that's what I thought. <laughs> and if they don't have like hash browns at Wendy's for breakfast. They've got these weird like breakfast fries and they suck. But their breakfast baconator is the greatest uh, breakfast food of all time. So yeah, I bring stuff sometimes. This morning I brought popcorn. And donuts. So I do bring some stuff home. Uh, so last week I'm all dolled up and I go to church and I usually sit around the back. I've been slowly but surely getting closer. Like I think today I sat six rows from the back. So I'm getting better. I'm getting closer. Uh, I usually sit around the back and there's pamphlets in the back. There's free pamphlets and they always grab a shit ton of pamphlets. Some of my favorites include sex and contraception for Catholics. Really? I believe that Catholic contraception is just uh, right before you come, you just say a little prayer. And that's basically contraception for Catholics. The Catholic mom nurturing your household. Well, well, true Catholic con- contraception is picking up a sweet altar boy.
Oh. They're on to you, Pastor Dan. <laughs> Yeah. This is my favorite. What Catholics should know about Scientology. And I was, that one pissed me off because Scientology is actually a religion that was created by a man named L. Ron Hubbard. They believe it, and it's like, oh wait, this is a serious look at Scientology. And there's no mentions of Xenu. There's no mentions of the. It's like, it, it's a serious look, and it's like, oh, this pisses me off. I mean, this would be a hit job, but, but no, we, this isn't Southern Baptist, it's Catholic, and they're all like, oh, let's take a serious look at Scientology. Oh, you disappointed me, Catholic. Oh, trying to be nice to them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that pissed me off. Well, last week, uh, just had it in my hands. I got a copy of the church's visitor's tour guide. Uh, welcome to St. Benedict's Catholic Church, built in 1907, a visitor's tour guide. And oh my God, this sent me down a crazy ass rabbit hole and that's the shaft. It's crazy, it's ridiculous, it's unbelievable, it's maddening. I'll give you an exciting new reason to hate the Supreme Court. And there's a, at one point, Shades of Elmer McCurdy. Uh, yeah, so, uh, buddy, uh, let's get to the shack proper now. Do you know? Put the first one up. Put the first one up. Do you know who Jim Thorpe is? Yes. Yes, I do. The name of the alternative school. Here in town, thank you, Amber. We will be getting to the reasons for that in just a little bit. Oh yeah, that's the in fact, in fact, Bunny. In fact, his gold medal was presented to him. He won two gold medals in the 1912 Olympics. His two gold medals were presented to him by King Gustav V of Sweden and Tsar Nicholas II of Russia. And at the time of the medal ceremony, King, uh, King Gustav said to Jim Thorpe, you are the greatest athlete in the world! Okay. Jim Thorpe, one of the world's best athletes, besides being the first Native American to win gold, he also played professional basketball, professional baseball, and both collegiate and professional football. Considered by many to be one of the best football players of all time, Strange fact, he played pro baseball for the New York Giants from 1913 to 1915, and also in 1917. And then, in 1925, he played pro football for the New York Giants. Do you want me to walk you through that again? Sure. Okay. <laughs> New York Giants. He also played pro football for the New York Giants. Yeah, yeah well, that, that vaguely rings a bell as being possible. Apparently, there was a pro uh, baseball team called the New York Giants, and there was a pro football team also called the New York Giants. I, I was figure out that there was never a pro basketball team called the New York Giants. Yeah. 
if we, if I'm not mistaken, and we're talking sports, so it's highly probable. But I'm pretty sure the New York Giants became the Dodgers. And then the football team became the Giants. Then the football, well, the football team just stayed the Giants. Yeah, they stayed the Giants, yeah. I really think that for the symmetry of the thing, the New York Knicks should change their name to the New York Giants. Yes, they should. Just... I, I just think that that's fair. He was also because what the hell's a knickerbocker anyway? Yeah. I, I just killed a mosquito. Or something. He was also the first ever president of the American Pro Football Association, which would eventually become the NFL. So this, and then he was also a, a football coach. This man did it all. In the 1910s and 1920s and 1930s was not the Michael Jordan of America. He was three Michael Jordans in one. Uh, Jim Thorpe was, in the 1910s and 20s and 30s, what Michael Jordan wanted to be. Michael Jordan, you are just amazing at basketball. Oh yeah? Well, I'm gonna play baseball. I'm playing baseball now. What do you think about me playing baseball? And everyone said, you're such a good basketball player, though. You're just so great at playing basketball. So you just knew, you just knew that Michael Jordan wanted to Jim Thorpe it up. But America got together as a collective and said, no, no. Just go back to being a basketball player. So that, that, that makes me feel good. Here's a fun fact about Jim Thorpe. Okay. So he won his two gold medals in 1912 at the Summer Olympics held in Stockholm, Sweden from May 5th to July 22nd, 1912. It was the first Olympics to feature both the decathlon and their new sport, the pentathlon. And for those of you who don't know what the pentathlon is, it's basically the same thing as the decathlon, but while you're doing all of the different Uh-huh. What was that? Oh, yes. I'm assuming that that's a fantastic one. So, uh, people, Americans, are notoriously racist. They're notoriously racist AF. So, right before... Jim Thorpe was to compete in the Olympics. Some douchebag stole his shoes. Oh, I've heard this story. <laughs> yeah, so Jim Thorpe is like, crap. How can I compete in the Olympics without shoes? And, and the judges are like, well, you better find some shoes somewhere. So he finds two mismatched pair of shoes, one of which he pulled from the freaking trash. And not only did he win gold, Olympic gold medals, two Olympic gold medals, but he won them with two mismatched shoes, including one trash shoe. Yes. I think he should get like an extra gold medal for that. But here's the fucked up part. Like I said, people are notoriously racist, so the Olympics happened in 1912, and a year later, in 1913, the Olympic Committee said, Hey, Jim Thorpe, uh, so we did some investigating, and we figured out that from 1909 to 1910, you played semi-professional minor league baseball. That means that you're a professional and not an amateur. We're taking your gold medals. Fuck you. Oh. So they stripped him of his two gold medals. And not only is that notoriously fucked up, but also there was a rule in the books that said if you are going to strip anyone of Olympic medals, you have 30 days to do it. But the Olympic Committee a year later said, Jim Thorpe, we're taking your fucking medals because you played semi-professional minor league baseball for a 
year. And Jim Thorpe's like, but that was minor league baseball, and I won gold in the decathlon and pentathlon. And they're like, we don't care. We're still taking your medals. It was generally believed at the time that the reason why they took Jim Thorpe's two gold medals was not because, oh, you're, you're a semi-professional and not an amateur, but because, damn it, we gave two gold medals to a Native American. We gotta find some way to take that shit back. Uh, it's really fucked up. Eventually, his gold medals were reinstated, but that's a whole other fucking story, because his medals weren't reinstated until 1983, and also, he was... They reinstated his gold medals, and they made him the co-champion. Place, he's the co-first place winner now. Okay. So, and you can always count on the Olympic Committee to be racist bastard. So, well, on that on that part, like, what do you do? It's not the other guy's fault that they did this. Because because then that would ha mean having to strip him of his medals that they gave him. You know what I mean? So, like... It's fucked up. It's fucked up. They never should have taken it from Jim Thorpe in the first place. So, Jim Thorpe, he was born in the year question mark. Yes. Because Oklahoma wasn't a state yet, and there weren't records as to his birth. Uh, his, historians believe that he was born in Frog, Oklahoma, but in numerous in Craig, Craig, Fragwee, Fragwee, Frog, Fragwee. He was born in, 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 historians believe he was born somewhere around the vicinity of the town of Fragwee, Oklahoma. But uh, Jim Thorpe himself repeatedly said that his hometown was Shawnee, Oklahoma, which is where I currently live. Uh, Why should we believe him? Because he's the one who said it. <laughs> he believed he was born in Bragg, and uh, Jim Thorpe's like, no, he was Shawnee. Shut up, Jim. What do you know? <laughs> We'll figure this out. So they believe he was either born in 1886 or 1887 or 1888. The only real record that they have was his baptism. He was baptized as Catholic. He was one of America's greatest athletes. He died on March 28, 1953. In 1951, they made a movie about him. And it's called, like, Jim Thorpe, All-American Hero. You know who played him? The legendary Native American actor, Burt Lancaster! Hey. <clears throat> Fuck Hollywood! <laughs> this is the, uh, Fuck Hollywood! God, that's, so that's right up there with Charles and Heston playing a Mexican! Yes. Yeah, I, yeah. Playing I'm Chinese. Track down the movie uh -huh. and see it now. Uh, so. He died on March 28th. Who the part from Bruce Lee? Who, invented, who, who wrote it? What? I had to merge with Bruce Lee and David Carey, and I had kind of tangents off with David Carey in there. And I'm sorry. Cliff Booth wouldn't have beaten up Bruce Lee as good as he did. Not Cliff Booth. No, I do not believe Ki Cliff Booth. You know, but I, I had read a story that it was based on a stuntman who was primarily a wrestler who was able to take Bruce Lee down to the mat, basically. And that, okay, I, I can, I can kind of see that. In the novelization that I read uh, earlier this year, uh, it specifically says that the way that Cliff Booth was able to fuck up Bruce Lee so much is when he said, "All right, now do that again." That 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 it's a it, it was a psychological thing that he said, "Okay, best out of three falls, Bruce Lee." 
Hit me with your best shot. Oh, you hit me with that. Okay, now try it again. Knowing that the person that he is fighting will then do the exact same move again, which he now knows how to counter. So he just has to lose the first fight, and then he knows he'll win the second fight, and then for the third fight, that's the actual fight. That was how it's explained in the book. And okay, I can kind of see that, but still, I don't, I don't think that with 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 and uh, hardcore like that. just as the Great Depression happened. So he had a really hard time after he uh, retired from sports. Uh, he ended up an alcoholic. He ended up with a bunch of money problems. And he died of heart failure on March 28, 1953. His funeral took place on Monday, April 13, 1953. St. Benedict's Catholic Church in Shawnee, Oklahoma! <laughs> Which is the church that I go to! Well, because I got the freaking visitor's tour guide, and it's like, oh, here is where we have the Blessed Sacrament in the tabernacle. Here are the candles. Here are the stations of the cross. Oh, the 14th window is located at the north entry. The 21st window is located at the north side. And right at the back, the back page, right here. In this church, the funeral mass was held for Jim Thorpe. And they reprint an article in the Shawnee News Star newspaper from April 14, 1953. Thorpe given final farewells. And I'd like to read it to you. you back home. Mrs. Jim Thorpe, widow of the world-famous athlete, cried out these words in the Marble Hall of Fairview Mausoleum on Monday as she departed from her husband's briar for the final time. Thorpe's body was placed in a crypt in the south wing of the mausoleum following, following solemn requiem high mass at St. Benedict's Catholic Church. It will remain in the temporary resting place until erection of a $100,000 memorial to be built in Shawnee in his honor. And then I thought, wow, you mean to tell me that there's a big memorial to Jim Thorpe here in Shawnee, Oklahoma? I'm going to have to look this up. Type, 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 type. Oh, wait, all I'm seeing is shit in Pennsylvania. This must be a mistake. Let me keep looking. Shit in Pennsylvania. What's the deal? Let's looking. So here's what happened. Uh, this is crazy. So, Jim Thorpe's family was raising money for a memorial. And all the people in the town of Shawnee, Oklahoma, so proud of their local boy, and they're raising money for Jim Thorpe. But unbeknownst to his family, Jim Thorpe's third wife, Patricia Thorpe, sells his car. Sold his what? Oh. Because at the time of his death, uh, they were having financial problems. And Patricia Thorpe finds out that there's these two municipalities in Philadelphia that are hoping to lure in tourists somehow. And those two municipalities buy the corpse of Jim Thorpe off of his third wife, Patricia. The corpse is sent from St. Benedict's Catholic Church in his own town of Johnny to two small towns in Philadelphia, and once they get the corpse, they get these two municipalities, they are merged, and they form a town which they call Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania, despite the fact that Jim Thorpe never fucking went there! Getting Elmer McCurdian around here. Yes. So there's a town in Pennsylvania called Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania, that Jim Thorpe has never been to, but that's where the memorial is, and not here in Shawnee, where he was born, and 
where he lived and where his funeral happened. It's fucking insane, but it gets crazier. In 2010, Jim Thorpe's living son, Jack, I've got six and a half minutes, I got it. Jim Thorpe's son, Jack, says, I am suing the town of Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania, to get my father's body back. And this was his plan. There's a thing called NAGPRA, the Native American Graves Protection and Reparations Act. And it says, hey, uh, we, we, the U.S. government, know we fucked you Native Americans over. We took your bodies and we buried them all over the place. We will gladly give them back to you and bury them wherever you want. I mean, as long as it's not a muse in a museum or anything, you will gladly give the bodies back. And Jim Thorpe's son, Jack, said, Ha! I am invoking the NEDPRA Act. They have to give me the body back. And a judge ruled and said, The town of Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania, the entire town, is a museum. You're not getting your father's body back. Fucked up. So then he kept going. He was appealing. He was still in the court system. And eventually the third court of appeals ruled and they said, Okay, that judge who said that, that Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania is a museum, that's fucked up. It's not a museum. Uh, it, uh, Jack, you can have the body back. Hey, Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania, send the body back to Shawnee, Oklahoma, where it can be buried, where it's supposed to be. So then the town of Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania sued. It went all the way to the Supreme Court. And in 2015, the Supreme Court ruled that Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania was in fact a museum and that uh, Jim Thorpe's son can't have his dad's body back. So there's a lot of people who are saying this right now. I'm saying it for two reasons. Fuck the Supreme Court. That's some messed up shit. What the hell? Why is Jim Thorpe's body in Pennsylvania in a town he's never even been to? He did go to school in Pennsylvania. He did go to a school in Pennsylvania hundreds of miles away from the town that he lived, that, that his body is now resting in. He never went, Jim Thorpe never went to Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania. His body should be in Shawnee, Oklahoma, but it's not. It's in a town that he hasn't been, and it's the Supreme Court's fault that Jim Thorpe's corpse isn't fire. That is a messed up story, and I am surprised that, that this whole thing happened in my backyard, at my church. I'm also surprised that I can say my church, but there you go. Uh, yeah, I... I Every Sunday, I go to the church that had Jim Thorpe's funeral. So weird. But yeah, if that's messed up, they sold his corpse. Who sells a corpse? I mean, what are you, Elmer McCurdy's wife? That is shocking to me. Yeah, but that's shocking. I won't give him back. That's up. And nowadays, Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania gets tourists from all over the world who come to their art shows, their craft shows, their art festivals, and people, a lot of people come to Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania, there you go, I forgot, uh, a lot of people come to Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania and they go, oh, I love this place, it has such a nice uh, art festival that happens every year. Your fucking name, though. So many people nowadays don't even know why it's called Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania. It's called Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania because they bought a car. It's messed up. It's what it is. I am and I know that I have said this before on the podcast. I am shocked that more people don't know this story. Well, see, see now, I, 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 of course, I've always assumed that that's where he was from. Especially since fucking everything there is, I mean, it's Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania, but then it's in, in Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania, everything is fucking Jim Thorpe, you know? So, like, the Jim Thorpe High School and, and, and all of that shit. Yeah, it's weird, because there's a bunch of Jim Thorpe named things here in Shawnee, too. 
And that's and that's right the area. Like I don't think she was actually in Jim Thorpe itself, but she was real close to it because it just came up in conversation all the time. You know, another connection to you. Yeah. So so like Jeannie says, we are we are both connected to this story. From both sides. We got this story up against the wall, and we're sandwiching this bitch. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm going to let the stream drop out this time and just bring it back up. So anybody watching the stream, which is nobody, just wait a minute. We'll be right on back. Uh, we'll come back and go on break. Yes. So, uh, join us next week for more educationally uneducational fun with Steve and Sorek of Grazza Nation. And God help us in the future. Everyone. When, when we're, when I'm at the Catholic Mass and everyone's like saying a big it just cut. Mm-hmm. And it cut hard. Mm-hmm. Because I'm going to play Dabney on the break gotcha. for the first time ever. And if I take break now, we're not streaming. Oh, sure, sure. Wah, wah, wah. Let me hold on there. Let me get over here. You do that. Yeah, this sucks. It's just so sloppy. Yeah. Okay. So, we have we have come back to go to break. Yes. Uh, crap, what would I say during breaks? Oh, uh, we'll be back. Hey, hey, uh, funny. But we are doing this because this will be the world premiere of the first episode of Dabney's Dystopian Dreams. Don't, don't get too excited. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so maybe, you know, no, now that I'm thinking about it, uh, maybe we should take a break. Should we take a break? We should take a break. Okay, I, I concur. We will be right back with more of the Pokemon film after these commercial messages. I missed you! Now, and great. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, hey there, my little babushkas. It's me, Dabney, a fucking alley. Actually, I'm an inactive vet. I was an operating vet, but I got kicked out of surgery. What the fuck? Uh-huh. Oh. oh, hey there, my little babushkas. It's me, Dabney. Wait, I did this part all right, didn't I? What was he saying? Oh, yeah. Well, what else should I call myself? A non-operating fetin? An inoperational fetin? A fetin who has ceased to operate? Nah. Inactive fetin gets down to my very core. My very essence, man. We Fettons are kind of a marginalized group in the galaxy. 
Did you know that there's a group of wackabees who's telling people that we possess Hades in the maternity ward? Hundreds of us? Thousands of us all crowding into the same baby? That's not a possession, man. That's a rape. I'll clue you into a little something. It's horseshit. Look, I've been to the earth, and that's as close as I'm getting to you creatures. You're fucking disgusting! There isn't an orifice in your body that doesn't leak something, man. You pick your noses while you're driving. We can see you! Jeez, you're not invisible just because you're oblivious, man. Filthy fucking animal. Since I seem destined to die on some dystopian shithole planet, might as well be Theta Prime. We got Theta Prime A, Theta Prime B, and Theta Prime C. Yeah, it's stupid. Blame L. Ron Hubbard. I live on Theta Prime B, and that B stands for badass. But enough of that. Now it's time for a couple of badass videos from Undead Cow Studios and the Pope on Film. Hello everybody. It's me, Reverend Steve. I am nervous. Because I'm gonna drink a 41-year-old beverage that might kill me. There was a TV show called Dallas. Dallas was a soap opera that originally premiered in April of 1978 as a miniseries, but the miniseries was so popular that in September of 1978, they decided to turn it into a short one-season TV show. It became so popular that it ran from 1978 to 1991. One character, uh, Bobby. Ewing was killed off, but he was so popular that they decided to make his death a dream. Really stupid. And then, of course, the, the main character was sort of the, the patriarch of the family. His name was J.R. Ewing. In the 1980s, they made a beer. Premium beer. J.R. Ewing's private stock came out in the year 1980. And it says on the bottom here, if you have to ask how much my beer costs, you probably can't afford it. I purchased very cheaply a six-pack of this. One had a hole in it, and it was empty, but the other five were still open and sealed. And so I put this in the fridge for a while, and I'm going to drink it. Surprisingly, I posted about this on Twitter, and I'm like, hey, I've got this 41-year-old beer. Who wants to see me try it? And the answer was a big resounding no are you serious you could die which i wasn't expecting from twitter but i basically got shamed and uh, so i'm gonna open this this is weird do you see this how, how do i Ooh, look at that that's the weirdest huh yeah it's like v8 okay so um all right. No, I didn't shake it. I'm going to drink a 41-year-old beer now, so Pinky's up for the classy stuff. So, okay. First off, it tastes dusty. It might be a little dust on my body. But when you get past that, okay, so you know when when you're like young, when you're like in your 20s, and you're like, I'm going to go get beer. You're talking about this. The cheapest beer imaginable. Okay, so, so there's like, there's like cheap beer that will burn your mouth because it's horrible. And then there's cheap beer where it's like Mickey's. Eh, that's what this is. This isn't bad. But it's also not good. It, 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 it tastes all right. It tastes all right. Oh. 
This is pretty good. This is pretty good. It tastes cheap. It doesn't taste as uh, as uh, premium as J.R. Ewing from the hit show Dallas, but no, this is all right. This is pretty good. I wouldn't recommend it, but yeah, this isn't that bad. It's cheap and dusty. But I've I've drank cheap and dusty beer before. You know, go into some sketchy convenience store and they have a ninety eight cent uh pint of some beer you've never heard of before and you buy that, that's what this tastes like. Uh it's not that bad. Not that bad. It's alright. This is a weird video. But hey, thanks for watching. And if you're watching this during the podcast, hey, break time. Buddy and I are peeing. This is it. We got stories for our grandchildren. Much, much, much later. Hey, Grandpa, tell me about the time you committed treason. Well, our president was a racist and a rapist, and he lost re-election. So we decided to break into the Capitol, and try and hang the vice president. Kill a bunch of people. And I saw somebody take a big shit in, in a hallway. Yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a pretty great time. And, and that's my story. That's not a very good story, Grandpa. Well, fuck you, you piece of shit. Get a load of this asshole, Andy Warhol, the P.T. Barnum of the art world, making soulless pop culture crap for Madison Avenue, and don't even get me started on his film catalog. I know it doesn't look like a movie, because nothing's fucking moving! And there's eight hours of this shit. Want more variety? You can watch five hours and twenty minutes of this asshole sleeping. Does it get any more exciting than that? Yeah. Almost fucking anywhere. Fuck Andy Warhol. Pack up your troubles in your old kit bag and smile, smile, smile. While you valise the burger light in your bag, smile boys, that's the style. What's the use of worrying? It never was worthwhile. So pack up your troubles in your old kit bag and smile, smile, smile. I'm a Leo, and I love dewy spiderwebs in the sunset, long walks on the pavement, and hiding in shoes, and I'm looking for a special female, and girl, not everyone sees you the way I do, so let me look deep inside all eight of your beautiful eyes, and I don't see human like other people do, I see a glorious spider baby, yeah. So I want to let you know I play spider with you all night long Shimmy here, up next to me And do that stanky spider dance you do So shake that cephalothorax And your abdomen too Ah, girl Come on, come on, be my spider, baby Yeah, be my spider, baby Come on And I 
know how it is when a male spider tries to show you what he's made of. And I gotta let you know, I don't mind dying for just one night of sweet spider love. If that's what it takes to get near your girl, a hungry female may consume any invertebrate that comes along, including her shooters. But baby, but baby, I don't mind because you're truly worthy. You're worth it, baby. My better pals are palpitating, circulating. I could be perspirating, but I can't because I got an exoskeleton. But that don't matter, nah. So let me be your daddy, baby. Hopelessly tangled up in your silky web. Let me kiss your fangs before you jump off my head. Yeah. Mm. Come on, come on, be my spider, baby. Yeah. One, two, one, two. Come on, come on, be my spider. You know what you do, girl. Yeah. I'll be your daddy, long leg, sugar. Come on. Spend your pride, do it for me. I'll be your daddy, long leg. Be my baby, spider, I'll spider. Sugar. In many spider species, females eat the males after sweet, sweet love. But I don't mind. Nah. You see, I got eight boots on my legs for knocking. I notice you do too. Spider baby rocking all night long. You see, even spider love is blind. Come on. Ooh. Come on, come on, be my spider baby. Sixteen yeah. boots of spider knocking. You know it's true, girl. Come on, girl. come on, come on, be my spider baby. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be afraid. <laughs> come on, come on, be my baby. Yeah. Be my spider baby. Yeah. yeah. Come on, come on, be my spider baby. Yeah. Yeah. Be your daddy, spider long leg. Come on, come on, be my baby. So until next week, get a load of this shit. I can't change that. I can't do the most important thing of my life. To believe. Our great leaders created a system for the United Nations. A world full of peace, love and ice cream. I feel like we're the only Christians left in the world. They came in and arrested my sister. Mom. Leaders created a system of security, the United Nations, United Thoughts, United Currency, Language, and Values. Arrested, tortured, and killed. Danger is often hidden in beauty. And these are dangerous. Anyone can sweep this out, he calls you his beloved. Stop that, what are you doing? Friends, I think we have to stop this. I can get all the phone numbers of 
the Christians if I hack the police. Wow. <laughs> that's, a, that's a game changer. We could really achieve something big. We can shift something around. Through Jesus, we will get through this hard time. They may take our lives, but they will never take our freedom. We are humans, created in the image of God, freed by Jesus Christ and filled by the Holy Spirit. We don't need to fear anymore. We are children of the Most High, and we are created from the God that created heaven and earth. And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. It's time, Bunny! It's time! Yes, Bunny, my friend, it is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film podcast to amble our way, to saunter our way, to electric slide our way into the second half of our show, and it is said half, wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our all-new low-fat four-wheel drive extra strength and now available without a prescription, Movie of the Week! And this week, we kick off yet another theme summer of movies. What is this, our fifth annual? Um... We'll, I'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll, 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 we'll get there. Let me finish the intro. Okay. Start another one of our trademark theme summers with a look at an absolute turd burger of a movie so bad it's good. 2025! Yes. Been saved by a virus. And I'd like to start off this discussion with the film by just, uh, if we could. Uh, just sing Amazing Grace together because this is a very religious film and I just wanted to start off with a proper tone. <laughs> Amazing Grace! And here he's singing, buddy. How sweet! I don't know how to beatbox. Oh, Alexa keeps ripping them. 
ripping them. She's, yeah, just, she just keeps ripping cards. And then eventually she'll ask you, like, if you would like me to do a long fart, say long fart. If you would like me to do a series of short farts, say short fart. If you would like me to play reggae farts, say reggae farts. And so we, like, we, me and the, the two youngest, we're just showing our age and just having Alexa fart for like 10 minutes straight. And then eventually she asks us to say, to, to say reggae farts. And we said, okay, Alexa, play reggae farts. And it starts playing music from a musician named Mr. Farts, who specializes in fart music in different genres. He has a song called Heavy Metal Farts, a song called Rock Farts, a song called Rap Farts, Mariachi Farts, and Reggae Farts. And Reggae Farts quickly became my kids and I's favorite song. Yeah. And so I, I found it on YouTube. I found Reggae Farts on YouTube. And uh, this is actually much more fun of a story than watching this week's movie, 2025, The World is Saved by a Virus, but that's beside the point. Uh, so, so I found the video for Rockfart, and I go to the comments, and every other comment is, Alexa brought me here. Alexa started playing this song one night. For whatever reason, Alexa, the AI, is obsessed with a musician called Mr. Fart. So I subscribed to Mr. Fart's YouTube channel. He hadn't done a new song in over a year. But I think because Alexa, for some strange reason, has become obsessed with a musician named Mr. Fart, Mr. Fart is on tour in Europe and has announced that tomorrow, Monday, May 23rd, he will be dropping a new song, and it's called Space Fart. I'm hoping that it's a David Bowie inspired song, like uh, Space Fart Odyssey or something like yes. that. Like this is ground control farting on Major Tom or something like that. Yes. Uh, but it's dropping tomorrow. I'm very excited. I just want to let everyone know that tomorrow on YouTube, Mr. Fart is dropping another new song. This is a big deal. Synthesis of space odyssey and ashes to ashes, which is space odyssey too. I have my favorite boy song, by the way. Uh, farts. My favorite David Bowie song is Oh You Pretty Thing. It's my lady chair. Yeah. But 
if Bonnie, do yourself a favor after this episode of the podcast. music mr farts is everywhere really but i'm a big fan of mr farts right now and just do yourself a favor after this podcast uh go on youtube and uh listen to reggae farts it's one of the best songs in the world okay and we can't wait for tomorrow when space farts drops hopefully it's everything that i want it to be and more okay i guess we have to talk about the movie now yes uh, but before we do, okay, so last summer's theme was 2021, the summer of bottoming, yes. where we watched movies from the IMDb Bottom 100, and that was exciting because a lot of films were chosen on social media by our fans, and so, like, I don't know how we ended up watching films from the IMDb Bottom 100 and not having to watch any of the... Human Centipede movies, but we did. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, we had to watch a bunch of films from those epic movie pieces of shit. Yes. We did all of those. Uh, Amber, Amber texted me like two weeks ago, and it's like, hey, so my friends were telling me about this movie, and so can you download it for me, Mom? It's called a uh, superhero movie, and I lost my shit because that's one of those movies. I was like, you dare ask me for this on the day of my daughter's wedding. <laughs> so that was last summer. The summer before that was my favorite, the summer of Fred Willard. Yes. Remember that strange alien movie? Yes. With a radio host and then Fred Willard on the radio station? Well, we, 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 we also watched the very underground, some podcasts have co covered it, or maybe just played the trailer, I don't know, but we watched Teenage Mother. Teenage Mother means nine months of trouble. Yes. Before then was the summer of Saw, and then it was the summer of Star Wars. Yeah. Yes. So this is our fifth. Okay, because I remember in 2020, I'm like, okay, shit, I guess we can finally do the summer of the Fast and the Furious. Wait, Fred Willard died? Boom. Oh. There's also Children of the Corn to be considered. There are 11. There are 11 Children of the Corn movies. Because we could watch, like, a, we could watch the Transformers animated movie and then all the Transformers live action ones, which I think might be like six or seven. But then we can do Transmorphers. Yeah. We can do, you know, uh, some other movies. So, so. And then, the one I'm really excited about that we'll be doing one of these years, uh, the Summer of Rocky. I bet that'll yeah. be fun. Yeah. You know? That'll be all right. But, uh, I, I, I suggest we, we keep pushing off the Summer of the Fast and the Furious the way we keep pushing off the Cleveland Bloom Disaster. The Cleveland Balloon Disaster. Totally forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. We need to, eventually, we're going to do that. Okay. So, um, so anyway, we do theme summers, and it's been a bit of fun, a lot of fun. And this year, oh boy, it's going to suck because uh, I have coined a new phrase, and I'm really proud of it. 
and that's what we're going to be focusing on. This year is 2022, the summer of COVID exploitation. This is a term that I am going to explain. Extremely low budget movies, quickly made during the pandemic to cash in on the pandemic. Exploitation films, grindhouse films made with COVID in mind. These films are badly done. They are super cheap, horrible acting, hideous special effects, and a lot of them offensive and racist. Yes. Uh, and we're not talking about direct to DVD because these films are way too cheap to ever be printed on a digital video disc. Yes. If, if anything, these are, I don't know, direct to TV. <laughs> Or something like that. Direct to Redbox, maybe. Redbox exclusives. It's a lot. That, like, I've got about seven, eight, nine COVID exploitation movies that have been made throughout 2020, 2021, and 2022. And it says a lot that out of all the actors and actresses you'll see this summer, the best and most well known actor that you will find in all of these films. Uh, and you, we talked about it on the podcast that Kevin Nash's upcoming film will be called COVID-19 Invasion. Here's the plot. The Chinese have given us a virus as a weapon because the Chinese fucking suck. And it's like, okay, this looks, this sounds horrible. We're going to watch it twice. There's, there's just a ton of these movies, just a shit ton of them. And we kick it off with one of the, yeah, Kevin Nash, the star of Slaw. Slaw. Oh, man, the memories are just, the painful memories are just. seen in quite a while. So hold on. Let me set the mood for you, okay? Let me set the mood for you. It's 2025. The world as we have known in 2020 does not exist anymore. The virus changed the world. Communism is just like fucking all over the fucking place. It's fucking everywhere. For reals. Yeah. Shit, what's that? It's communism. What's that over there? Fucking more communism. Oh shit, what's this in front of me? Big ass pile of fucking communism. It's just all over the place. Yeah. <sighs> supermarket to get a soda and I was pissed off because like wait you raised it to 75 cents thank you Biden's America <laughs> so it's like fine I'll pay the extra quarter I'll get a soda I want what do I want I always want a soda until I put the money in the machine and then my mind goes a blank and it's like oh man I want a soda so bad quarter 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 And usually I press something, and I know that once I press it, I'm like, shit, no, I didn't want a Dr. Pepper, but okay, I'm, I'm, I'm committed now. This is the drink. Shit, I wanted Dr. Pepper. I got communism. It really is just all over the place. Fuck. Uh, 
a global state developed. Yes, we're to believe that in four short years, because this movie came out in 2021, we are to believe in four short years, every nation on Earth just agreed to be one nation. Yeah. That is like, uh, like, yeah, Iran, Iraq. Like, like the, the, the government told or give a reason why that's necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, hey, in four years, we're just all going to become one country and we're all going to speak English for some stupid reason. Meetings are illegal for some reason. Yeah. I think people will mind, but I'll tell you whatever. Traveling is illegal. All travel agents are executed. Cruise ship directors are beheaded. Yes. Team park employees have red hot pokers shoved up their tight assholes. Yes. And Christianity is illegal. Which everyone was surprisingly fine with. Is it illegal? Oh, no, that's fine. It's just Christianity, too. Yeah, everyone suddenly becomes a snake handler. So, like, the Scientologists are still okay. You know? That's the one thing about this movie overall that, that I loved. You know, because it is, like, so Christian. This movie talks about the oppression and never shows us anything. Which is, which is just so symbolic of actual Christian oppression, which doesn't exist. Yeah, let's, Interesting. Let's get some rapes uh, up here. Let's get some rapes. Let's, let's show some fucking oppression. It's interesting because in this film, Christianity is illegal. You know what else is illegal? Competent filmmaking. I, I guess they popped the money. IMDb said it was only ten thousand dollar budget, which okay, yeah, okay. But at least they spent the money on the cameras, and they at least tried to like actually light a set. Yeah, so it was really kind of interesting. I appreciated that they at least tried. It's the same kind of cheap things that you expect in films. I'm gonna I'm gonna say this every week. Every week, every episode that we do uh the summer of COVID exploitation, if you want to see a good movie that was made during the lockdown during the pandemic a good film done well do yourself a favor and track down the 2021 film how it ends it features helen hunt fred armison nick kroll Billy winford whitney cummings colin hanks charlie day and for of some reason and Somehow this isn't annoying. Holly Shore. Great freaking movie. It was a good movie. Made in the pandemic during lockdown, but it's done right, and it's one of my favorite freaking movies. Go see that. But if you want to just see a shitty movie, I gotta say, <laughs> this movie's pretty goddamn. This this one is 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 wonderfully shitty. The acting may have been a step up from, say, uh, Born to Mafia. You know? Uh, some of the acting was horrendous. Some of it was, eh, we can get by here. You know? Uh, I don't think this is racist. But... So many people in this film sounded like, like, a, oh no, they have, they have made Christianity illegal. We must 
we must fight to make sure that Jesus is worshipped to both of us who wild and crazy <laughs> yeah <coughs> 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 And it, to the best of my knowledge, it was supposed to have been taking place in Germany. I believe. Uh, but it was really kind of funny because apparently there's a South Germany. Because there was some distinctly different accents going on there. Yeah, like that 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 really red guy. Who had one of my favorite lines of the fucking movie. Uh well I, I, I live about about twenty minutes away from oh right, I don't I don't know where I am. But still I, I live about twenty minutes away from here. <laughs> uh Something, something tells me that some of this film oh might have actually been ad-libbed. <laughs> yeah, this isn't really a Christopher Guest level of ad-libbing. Oh, no. soccer mom car into a ditch and i love this this was this was like so amazing to me so like to escape does he run away from the cops by running up the hill where the cops are then blocked by a vehicle and a falling tree no he sl- he does a starsky and sl- hutch slide over the hood of the car, right to where the cops are, who immediately put him down to the road and handcuff him instead of beating the living piss out of him first. Yeah. And, and to be fair, the guy that they're beating the piss out of, that is our hero, who is what happens when you buy Guy Pierce on Wish. Yes. 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 If you're watching this, you buy Guy Pierce from LA Confidential on Wish.com, and what you get is we need to bring back Christianity because they banned it because the coronavirus is the fake. And I'm sorry, man. That was a relatively calm arrest for you. Call yourself a totalitarian state. Where are all the jackboot thugs? This movie was lacking jackboot thugs. Oh, so they like just arrested you? Why aren't they beating you and then anally raping you with their batons like a like a decent totalitarian state? Like kind of like America. <laughs> 
Okay, let's be a let's be a little more specific here, okay, about what our brave heroes are doing, okay? Our brave heroes are leaving the big city, you know, where all the people are and stuff, who may actually be able to see the symbol of the fish that they paint places to go to the woods because they won't get caught in the woods because there are no fucking people in the woods. I need the Sudanese guy for this. My favorite part of the film is when our hero gets lost in the woods and suddenly he's singing with his reindeer spin. Then you're gone, all from a different path is mine. I'm left behind, wondering if I should follow. The best part about the movie Frozen 2 yes. is, is that uh, one of the characters has a cheesy 1980s romantic ballad called Lost in the Woods. And it's such a dumb, cheesy 1980s rock ballad that during the end credits, Weezer covers it. <laughs> it's such a dumb song, but it's the point. Because you can hear Brian Adams sing it. He doesn't sing it, but it's something he would sing. Honey, right now on Zoom, on the stream, if I have this lamp right here directly at my face, I look like a white woman, and I'm really excited about it. <laughs> I'm going to go talk to the manager yes. of this podcast right now, because I found a hair in my vagina. Yes. So they... they, they paint the fish symbol the vagina symbol that they stole from from Roman religions uh, and and when they come together OBS says it's disconnecting and reconnecting well don't go fucking with me now okay and then when it comes to where he paints the one line of the fish and she paints the other 
I feel I pretty much got a handle on their relationship. Only to find out in the, later in the movie, I am apparently terribly, terribly wrong. They were just friends. Are we? Well, like, it might have cut out for a second. Okay. Well, you know what? Since we're confused, let's cut the stream here. I gotta pee. Okay. Cool. And then we'll come back, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I like them. I want to get my ears pierced, but my wife won't let me get my ears pierced at players. In the mall, like all the kids get their ears pierced. Yes. I want to read you the synonym. I was going to do it in uh, Act 1, but I forgot. On Thursday, Ron Wyden, Democratic Senator from Oregon, who currently chairs the Senate Finance Committee, chided Republicans for the defeated state of the IRS, suggesting that the Republican Party is to blame for millions of unprocessed tax returns this year. And he was speaking on the Senate floor when he said the following, quote, Republicans are the guy in the hot dog suit swearing up and down that they're trying to find the guy who did it. <laughs> okay. That is a Democratic senator on the Senate floor referencing, I think you should leave with Tim Robbins in the greatest television show of all. I just wanted to bring that up. That happened like a day or two ago and it brought me so much joy. Good. It's so weird that I am super obsessed with this TV show, but unlike Sipple and Ollie and Cheap Seats, other people know this exists. Yes. And that, that means so much to me. I joined the Twitter group, I don't think they're called group, what are they called? Like a Twitter uh, community. Okay, they're not group, they're Twitter communities. Nine hundred members. Nice. Nothing, but I think you should leave references to each other, and I freaking love it. I can make the most obscure reference; they know exactly what I'm talking about. I mentioned to them that the character who plays Santa Claus in season two of "I Think You Should Leave" is in the movie "Everything Everywhere All at Once," and everyone knew exactly who I was talking. About. Cool. I, I, I'm just happy to to, to have people. You know, I, I, I just could not get into that show. It's okay that you're a sinner. But, but I could definitely go for some, some more Zazzy Zazz. Zazzy Zazz. Yeah. Zazzy Zazz. Zazzy Zazz. Zazzy Zazz. If, if, if you can't buzz, then you'll never Zazz. This is true. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> Love it! <coughs> I miss you, and I love you. And, missed you, too. Uh, this, uh, I, I, I'm excited for next week. We're going to be doing anti-coronavirus, a movie from 25, continue, continuing the summer of COVID exploitation. I'm not sure when next week's shaft is going to be. Hey, maybe it's going to be the great Cleveland balloon disaster. I've got a bunch of other ones on tap, including the inventor of the saxophone and how God wanted him dead. I've got uh, one about a horse uh, with the greatest name in the world. I've got a, I've got a bunch of different chaps on chap. Oh, the sad story of uh, Anthony Perkins. I was thinking about doing that too. Oh, okay. Uh, that's another sad one. Uh, Colonel Sanders. I've got one for him. I've got a bunch on half. Oh, the Italian tractor manufacturer? 
I have one about an Italian tractor manufacturer as well, but, but uh, that's next week. Now that I'm looking back at this week, the highs, the lows, the ups, the downs, Nancy Pelosi, the Northman, Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania, my ass. And of course, then they think they're lost, but then they never think our riddle. I think that this has been just a real this has been a great episode. I'm going to go maybe one of our best. Good, good. Uh, yeah, I, I, I felt the same way, but I didn't want to say that because I feel like you're the person who makes that distinction as to whether or not it's good or great or the best or anything. And I didn't want to step on your toes. But yes, I concur. I concur. So I'm... Um, So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve, and on behalf of Eleanor and Asha and everybody else, I just want to say thank you for listening, and we will see you next week. Hold on, you said? Okay. Uh, so on behalf of everyone here, I just want to say thanks. Thanks for listening to our wonderful, wonderful podcast. Yes. And we will see you next week, you godless demons. And chicken poopies. And chicken poopies. And chicken poopies. Chicken poopies? No. And cake and poopies. And cake and poopies. Oh, you know what cake is? You know what cake is? Cake is... Reluctantly crouched at the starting line. That's what cake is. That's what cake is. It is. Ask what is. Ask your mom what cake is, and, and mom will say that cake is reluctantly crouched at the starting line. Cake is horrible. Horrible. Cake is horrible? Huh? Cake can't sing. That's for sure. They are uh, horrible, yeah. or he is horrible, or whatever. He's a horrible singer. <sighs> Cut and print.